again there in our key verses for today. We'll see that David, he concluded in those verses, for as the heavens are high above the earth, David, he said, so great is God's mercy towards those that fear him. Today, I say to all of you that the holy season is upon us. The holy season is upon us as, as we begin to make our way to the cross and know there are no holiday songs during this season. There are no holiday lights during this season. And there aren't those type of holiday movies that we see around Christmas time during this season. Yet all the same during this season, I tell you that God's once again, his love, it is defined for us during this time, during this season, I say to you that we should all be celebrating the Lord. We should be celebrating. We should be appreciating the fact that God is full of mercy. Sadly, few seem to understand what David meant when he called on us saying, Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Some seem not to understand what David meant when David said that the Lord's mercy endures forever. During this time of year, I don't want us to be unappreciative of the Lord. I don't want us to be unappreciative of God's wonderful grace. I don't want us to be unappreciative of the Lord's mercy. So I feel that we need to take a deep dive. I feel like we need to take a deep look at the Lord today. I feel we need to look at his grace. I feel that we need to take a look at his mercy so that we can properly appreciate him this holy season. To start off with, I want to show you guys mercy in action by first taking a look here at the book of Numbers. Now, when I teach and when I preach about the Lord's mercy, I always seem to find my way to this book specifically because I like to give a bit of a history lesson so that we can understand that the Lord, he has not changed, that he has always been merciful, that he's always been gracious toward mankind. In the book of Numbers, we find that, again, God is patient. We find his love and we find that his mercy, we find that it is clearly defined for the world to see. In the 11th chapter of Numbers, for example, we see that while the children of Israel were journeying to the promised land, we find that they had complained. Prior to the 11th chapter, they were complaining about not having anything to drink. And in the 11th chapter, they complained that the only thing that they had to eat was manna. They complained that they weren't eating as good as they were when they were in the bondage of Egypt. Manna, we should all remember, was the bread that came from heaven. It was given by the Lord our God. It was given to the children of Israel to sustain them while they were on their journey to the promised land. Come on, come on. Now, though they complained about the manna that they were given every day yeah, yeah. of their journey, uh-huh. and while it frustrated the Lord, our God, God, he decided to be lenient. And he decided them to give them some good food to eat. He decided to give them meat to fill them up so much that they would hate it after having so much of it over a month of time. Again, I tell you that God's mercy, his love towards man was defined for us right there in the book of numbers. If that example is not good enough for you, we find again an example of the Lord 
his grace and his mercy. We see it defined for us again in the 13th chapter of Numbers. Now, we recall from the third chapter of the book of Exodus, when Moses, he stood before the burning bush. Mm -hmm. We'll remember that the Lord, he desired to deliver the children of Israel to a land that was good, a land that was large and a land that flowed with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And there in the 13th chapter of Numbers, you'll see God's faithfulness. You'll see it defined for us. You'll see where the Lord, he brought the children of Israel to the promised land. The children of Israel, they had reached a point on their journey to where they could have entered into the land that God had promised to Abraham the land that the Lord had promised to Isaac, mm -hmm. the land that the Lord had promised to Jacob as well. Yes, yes. And, and to confirm this promise of that land, to confirm that the land was indeed a good land, that it was large and that it flowed with milk and honey, mm -hmm. the Lord had Moses send 12 spies over into the land right. to scout out, to, to spy the land. That's right. And after 40 days of spying in the land, mm -hmm. the 12 spies, they returned. And they returned with a confirmation of God's promise. Mm -hmm. They said to Moses and to the people that the land indeed was a good land. Yeah, yeah. That the land indeed was a large land. Mm -hmm. And that the land indeed, it did flow with milk and with honey. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This confirmation, it should have proved to the people that God was no liar. Mm -hmm. It should have proved to the people that God is faithful to not only them, but the Lord is faithful to his every word, mm -hmm. that he is faithful to what he promises. Come on, come on. This moment for the children of Israel it should have been a moment of great rejoicing mm -hmm. as again, they would have seen that God was being faithful to them. They could literally see the promised land. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yet in this 13th chapter of numbers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we will see what I would say to all of you. We'll see one of the most saddest, one of the most tragic moments that we find yes. in scripture. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We will see there where 10 of the spies, after saying that the land was indeed good, they turned around and they began to speak ill of the land. They began to badmouth the land. They began to cry, oh, there are so many big and large people in the land. There are many giants in the land. The cities, they're large. They're fortified. Uh -huh. we, 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 we ought not go there. Speaking ill of the Lord, speaking ill of his promise, uh -huh. speaking ill of his blessing. Imagine doing that where God has promised you something and he has shown you what he has promised you. Mm -hmm. And then you turn around and you bad mouth God. <laughs> Imagine doing that. Mm -hmm. Then when we get over to that 14th chapter of numbers, we'll see how the bad report of those 10 spies, mm -hmm. we'll see how it stirred the people up. Mm -hmm. We'll see the, the work of the bad report, how it kicked into action mm. to where the people, they first began to murmur mm -hmm. about the report, about the land, about God's blessing. And then the people, they began to want to turn away mm -hmm. from God's promise. Oh. Then in the third verse of the 14th chapter of Numbers, you'll see where the people questioned they questioned the Lord. They said, why has the Lord brought us to this land 
to fall by the sword. Then there again in the third and then in the fourth verse, you'll see where the people, they began to demand for new leadership. Said that they didn't want to go into the land, but they wanted to go back to Egypt. I don't know if you all see it. I don't know if you all recognize it. I don't know if you all understand how serious how grave these thoughts, these words, and then these actions. I don't know if y'all understand how grave this was for the children of Israel. If you don't see how grave this was, let me point out to you here. Firstly, the people in rejecting God's blessing, they were being ungrateful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were being ungrateful for all that the Lord had did for them, how he had brought them out of Egypt. Mm -hmm crossed the Red Sea, brought them to Mount Sinai, Mm -hmm. dealt with an enemy that tried to attack them from behind Mm -hmm. and then brought them to the promised land. Mm -hmm. They were ungrateful for the Lord's providence. Mm -hmm. They were ungrateful for his protection. Mm -hmm. They were ungrateful for his deliverance. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the people, they were questioning the goodness of the Lord. They, they were questioning the benevolence of God. Saying again, accusing the Lord of leading them to their doom, leading them to their death. All right. All right. When all God desired was a future and a hope for the children of Israel, for the people. Thirdly, this is, was a truly a lack of faith. It was truly a lack of faith. It was truly a lack of trust in God from the people Mm -hmm. to where we see them again, rejecting not only the land, not only going into the land, but they were rejecting God. Mm -hmm. They were not only rejecting God, they were rejecting his promise. Mm -hmm. They were rejecting his blessing. Mm -hmm. And in rejecting him, they were rejecting the faithfulness of the Lord, our God. Mm -hmm. Do you see how serious, do you see how grave Mm -hmm. their thoughts, their words and their actions were now? Mm -hmm. I say to you that sadly, this tragic response Mm -hmm. is a response that is still repeated in the world on a daily basis. It is still being repeated today. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just something that the children of Israel did. It is something that we mankind still do mm-hmm. to this day. Mm-hmm. I consider how the Lord guides us. I consider how the Lord shields and protects us. I mm-hmm. consider how the Lord, he supplies our every need. And after the Lord does all of this, look at how we treat God. Mm-hmm. We treat the Lord less than the dirt that we walk on today. We are so ungrateful for all that the Lord does for us. We cannot even be bothered to think about the Lord. Nonetheless, put God first in our lives. And and I would ask all of you today, does the Lord deserve to be treated like that? I heard a uh uh-uh and I heard a no and I got a no sir as well. God does not deserve to be treated that way. When the Lord has been faithful to us before we were even conceived in this world. So I feel I have to ask today, has God not been with us on our journey? I feel I have to ask today, has the Lord forsaken us on this journey? Has God not supplied our every need? Has the Lord not shielded and has the Lord not protected us from all hurt, harm and danger while we are on this journey? Has God not been good to us? Has God not been good to you? Personally, I believe that the Lord has been more than good to me. I would say to all of you today that 
the Lord has brought me a mighty long way. Not only has God been good to me, not only has God brought me a mighty long way, I look at you all. And I look at all those who are beyond these walls. And again, I see that God has brought many, many people a mighty long way. I know this to be true that the Lord is good to all of us because I can look at the sun and see that it still rises and I can see that the sun still sets. I know that God has been good to us because the world, it still turns. I know that God has been good to us because no matter how much we try to destroy each other, no matter how much we try to kill one another, Man, we are still here. Mankind is still present in this world. Even the one that does not believe in him would have to look around and they would have to see that something is making this possible. And I tell you that that something ain't us. It ain't us because we hate each other, don't we? We try to tear each other down. We try to destroy one another over a whole bunch of silly stuff, a whole bunch of petty stuff. It ain't mankind that's holding the world together. I don't know if you hear me here. It's God that holds this world together. Yeah, just like the children of Israel, many people look around and they think that God ain't good. Many refuse and many still are rejecting the Lord our God today and they'll find anything to say that God ain't good. So how do you suppose that make the Lord feel? When we will get around and just like the children of Israel did, we will bad mouth God. We will speak ill about God. We'll mock and we'll scoff at God and we'll scoff at what he has promised. We'll say, hey, God ain't came back yet. His only begotten son that y'all always be going on about. Jesus hasn't come back yet. Bad mouthing a promise. How do you suppose God reacts when we continue to refuse and when we continue to reject what he has promised to all of us today, I began to wonder, has the Lord grown tired of us? On this thought, we will see there in the 11th verse of the 14th chapter of Numbers, we will see that God, he asked Moses, he had a question for Moses and he asked Moses, how long would these people reject me? He asked, he said, how long will they not believe me with all the signs which I have performed among them? See, this is one of the few moments in scripture where I can feel the exasperation of the Lord. It is one of the few times in scripture where I can feel the Lord beginning to grow a bit weary of what the children of Israel were doing. You see, the Lord had been so patient with them on that journey. They had danced and worshiped around that calf of that that calf of gold. But here God is still dealing with the children of Israel. He has brought them to the promised land. And they're saying, nope, -uh, nah, not for me. And God is, he's still there. And now even God is beginning to wonder how long are they going to reject me? The children of Israel were refusing and they were moving against what God had promised. And they were beginning to cross a line Mm -hmm. that they would not have wanted to cross. Mm -hmm. You see, I believe that the Lord, he was hurt by what the people were thinking. I believe that he was hurt by what they were saying. I believe that God was hurt by the way that they were moving. In scripture, it tells us that God there in the 12th verse it tells us there that he was ready to strike down the children of Israel with pestilence. And he was ready to disinherit them because of their disobedience. All right, all right. Could you imagine what it would take to push God to this point? Mm-hmm. It would take a special kind of disobedience 
to push God to the point of being exasperated there. I ask this because the one thing that scripture makes very clear to us is that the Lord, he neither faints nor is weary. Scripture tells us that the Lord is slow to anger and that he reserves his wrath for his enemies. However, the children of Israel, like I said, they were approaching a line that they did not want to cross. They were approaching an unpardonable line. If you get where I'm going with that. You see, the Lord does not deal with people that desire to move and speak against his works. You see, when you move against him, when you move against his works, when you blaspheme the Lord, there is no coming back from that. Now, Moses, he had an understanding about this. And we'll see there from the 13th through the 19th verse there in the 14th chapter of Numbers, if you want to just look at that and read it later. You'll see where Moses, he he cried out to the Lord on behalf of the children of Israel. And you can see there where Moses was essentially saying, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy not only on me, but have mercy on the people. You see there that he recalled the Lord's proclamation on Mount Sinai Mm -hmm. where God had proclaimed that he is merciful and gracious and abounds in goodness. Mm -hmm. He abounds in truth is what the Lord proclaimed. And the Lord proclaimed that he keeps mercy for thousands while forgiving iniquity, transgression and sin. God, Moses had recalled, proclaimed that by no means would he clear those that are guilty. Moses, he remembered and he interceded on behalf of the children of Israel. And we'll find there in that passage of scripture that God relented. He he didn't need Moses's reminder, but you better believe that it was a good show of faith from Moses interceding on behalf of the people and recalling what the Lord had promised. Mm -hmm. It was something that, that pleased the Lord. God we find was full of mercy to the children of Israel. God was full of mercy to those that did not reject him Mm -hmm. as they eventually did go on to inherit the land of promise. However, God made those that rejected him. He made them to wander in the wilderness for 40 years until that generation that rejected him until that generation that refused his promise, that refused his blessing until that generation passed away. Now, now Saul may look at that and may, they may think to themselves, man, God was being awfully harsh there. He's been awfully harsh in in how he dealt with those that refused and and those that rejected him. But we again must remember what the Lord proclaimed and we must remember what John wrote in his first epistle. That the Lord our God is both faithful and just. The Lord he shows grace to those who will strive to be obedient to him. However, at the same time, God will punish those who strive to go against him. And I tell you that for this today, I am very thankful. Mm -hmm. You see, I am thankful because I don't want to be caught up in the rotten bunch of apples. Mm -hmm. I am thankful that God has plucked me away from that bunch because I don't want to be caught up with the sins of sinners. I don't know if you hear me today and I don't know if you understand what I'm getting at today. But again, my thought for today is Lord have mercy. God is full of mercy. I don't know if you see it just yet, but we're about to see it here now today. 
In our key verse today, over in the 103rd Psalm, and that was again from the 8th through the 11th verse, if you happen to turn over to the 14th chapter of Numbers. Over in our key verse for today, we'll see where David, he's praising God. David, he praises the Lord for his mercy and for his grace. He points out there again in our key verse for today that God will not always contend with us, nor will the Lord always be angry with us. The us, I want you to understand that why David may have been speaking about the children of Israel. We may have been speaking about Israel. I want you to understand that the us there is in reference to God's children. And if you are of faith today, you are a child of God. Mm -hmm. You see, David, he understood God being full of mercy. And David, he understood this from his own personal walk, his own personal relationship, his own personal fellowship with the Lord. Mm -hmm. You see, all of us, I believe, are very familiar with the sin of David. Mm -hmm. And I believe all of us understand very well that the Lord was not pleased with David in David's great sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in David's great sin, we find that the Lord, he raised up adversity against David. Mm -hmm. You see, David, he he went through some things. Mm -hmm. David, he he had some struggles. He went out and he committed his sin and. Mm -hmm. And the Lord, he, he got on David. David and Bathsheba, they, they lost the son. Then there were inner turmoil within the children of David as well. As they raised up and they, they fought against each other. Yet in all that, that David went through, psalm after psalm, you'll see where David is calling on people and saying how he himself will praise the Lord, his God, our God. Mm -hmm. So how could David do this? After the Lord had raised up adversity against him. Mm -hmm. How could David, how could David be so grateful for the Lord and, and then praise God as well? Through though he, he went through some things because of his sin, we find that David understood very well that the Lord loved him. David, he knew that God loved him. Do you know that the Lord loves you today? You see, I feel like we often mistake God's frustration with us. I, I feel like we, we often mistake, we misunderstand when God is upset with us. We, 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 we seem to mistake God's anger with this idea that the Lord doesn't love us when we ought to know that that's not true. We ought to know that the Lord does love us. As the proverb says, whom the Lord loves, he chastens. Whom the Lord loves, hear it again, he chastens. Just as a father, the son in whom he delights. The Lord is going to correct you. I don't know if you all recall this, but I preached a few Sundays ago about how God rebukes us. The Lord, when you mess up, when you do wrong, when you transgress against him, he is going to get on you. You see, God loves us. His love, it has been confirmed for us through the giving of his only begotten son. When we and when the world itself was approaching that unpardonable line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The third chapter of John's gospel in the 16th verse says that God loved us, mm -hmm. that God loved the world. Mm -hmm. 
Now, a few weeks ago, again, when I preached about God's rebuke, when I preached about his correction, I likened his love to that of a loving parent. And then I began to speak about loving parents. And I recall Dee was shaking her head about how Sister Horton got on her when she was little. And, and I spoke about my mom and my dad as they are loving parents. They, they didn't let anything that me and my brother did that was bad or wrong. They didn't let it escape their eyes. They got on us. No matter where we were, when we messed up, they were there to correct us. Now, we didn't like it back then. Like I said, it wasn't fun. When they corrected us, when we messed up, we knew that mom was going to get on us first because she got home first. Yeah, yeah. And then when dad got home, my brother would try to go run and hide. <laughs> I knew that it was no point. <laughs> I just sat there and I just knew it was coming and I dreaded that it was coming. Yeah. You really think that when you mess up, that God ain't going to get on you? You, you really think that when, when you mess up that, that God ain't got something for you? Yeah, yeah. See, we, me and my brother, we can both look back on how my mom and how dad got on us when we was little. We can look back on it today and we know for a fact that they loved us. Because as I said a few weeks ago, if they didn't love us, they would have just let us get away with everything. Okay, now, and I think Dean and Andrew, and all of you, y'all can all agree with the same thing. I heard the stories about Granddad. If they didn't love us, they wouldn't have got on us the way that they did get on us. So I say to you, especially when it comes to the love of our God, that we should not confuse chastisement with damnation. If you don't Understand what I mean by that is that we should not under, we should not misunderstand correction with punishment. You see, that's unfortunately what happens today mm -hmm. is that we often make that mistake to again, where we believe that God is getting on us in, in, out of anger yeah. and out of hatred when the opposite is true, where God is chastising us. Because he loves us. You see, God will chastise you so that you can improve. The Lord will chastise you so that you can grow. So that you can, in other words, be better. God, he does not immediately jump to condemnation. God, again, he is full of mercy. When it comes to all of those who love him and all of those who fear him. Uh -huh. The Lord is merciful because again, he loves us and he wants us to grow. He wants us to flourish. He wants us to improve. Uh -huh. yeah. all right. yeah. As David said there in the 10th verse of the 103rd Psalm, the Lord has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us, according to our iniquities. Had God did that, the Lord would have not forgiven us. The Lord would have not sent his only begotten son to save us. All right. Yet again, God is love. Mm -hmm. We are not destroyed. Mm -hmm. God is love. He is full of mercy. The Lord, he delights in and he desires for us to come to him. He desires for us to come to him, especially in the day when we do mess up. In the day when we do error, God wants you to visit him, not to turn away from him. As David said there in the ninth verse of the 103rd Psalm, the Lord does not always strive with us, nor does he keep his anger forever. God is not going to be upset at you always, especially when you come to him. You see, the Lord, he finds a good balance in correcting us to the point that we will approach him, that we will acknowledge when we have transgressed. 
and that we will acknowledge when we need to do better. Again, the Lord, our God, wants you to repent. I told you, no matter what sermon I preach, it's always going to come back to turning to the Lord. Again, as John said, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He looks for our repentance. He desires for us to come to him in repentance. That is why God is so merciful today. That is why God gives you chance after chance today. See, when the Lord approached David through the prophet Nathan, he David, he finally acknowledged that he did wrong. Yeah, yeah. David, he, he finally repented of his transgression. God, he was not going to destroy the one that he loved. He desired to put David back on course. He desired to make David whole again. Something I don't think we understand today, something I don't think we recognize today is what sin does to our soul. Sin, if you allow it to remain with you, within you, it tears and it breaks apart your soul. It wounds your soul. And the last thing that the Lord wants is for you to be walking around a wounded and broken soul today. He doesn't want your spirit to be crushed. He doesn't want your spirit to be destroyed. He desires to make you whole. How else is he going to make you whole if you do not recognize him? If you do not come to him, if you do not recognize that you yourself need saving, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how is the Lord going to save you when all you do is play the game of turning around and walking away from him? Mm -hmm. You see, David, he realized the damage that he had did to his soul and he prayed for the Lord to restore the joy of his salvation. All right, got it. David prayed for the Lord to have mercy on him according to the Lord's loving kindness and according to the multitude of the Lord's tender mercies. Many of us, we may think that God deals with us harshly, but God, he is tender. He is soft and he is gentle in how he deals with all of his children. Scripture states for he, the Lord our God, bruises, but he binds us. He wounds, but his hands make whole. He does not destroy us. All right. All right. In the multitude of God's tender mercies, I tell you today that there is forgiveness. There is love. There is grace. By his tender mercies, David said there in the fourth verse of the 103rd Psalm that there is redemption from destruction. After praying and acknowledging his error and committing himself back to the way of the Lord, the fellowship that David once enjoyed but had been taken away from him, it was restored. I would tell you that in the multitude of God's tender mercies, there is fellowship mm -hmm. with him, mm -hmm. which I said to you for the first two months of this year is a source is the source of strength that you need to be able to endure that you need to be able to make it in this life. If you desire to live for the better, I hope you ain't forgot that series. I preached seven sermons on it. Because God is full of mercy, David then said that we are crowned with the Lord's tender mercies, which satisfies our mouth with good things. So our youth is renewed like the eagles. Let us understand this today. That because God is full of mercy, there is strength for not just me. There is strength for all of those who love the Lord and all of those that genuinely believe in him. Because God is full of mercy and we dwell in fellowship with him, let us remember that in this fellowship, we are comforted by the Lord, our God. We are guided by the Lord, our God. And the Lord, again, he supplies our every need. In this fellowship, 
because of God's mercy, we have had an opportunity mm -hmm. to partake in fellowship with the Lord, our God. Mm -hmm. In the third chapter of Lamentations, the prophet Jeremiah wrote that because God is full of mercy, we are not consumed. Because God is full of mercy, Jeremiah said that his compassions, they fail not. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah, he then said that because God is full of mercy, his mercies, they are new every morning. Every single day is a brand new opportunity for you. I don't know if you hear it today and I don't know if you get it today. I don't know if you understand it today. You have an opportunity to grow. You have an opportunity to flourish. You have an opportunity to improve. You have an opportunity to pick yourself back up when you have fallen down, when you have messed up, when you have error, when you have transgressed, when you have gone against God, you have an opportunity to do better because of God's mercy, because of his grace. You don't have to be destroyed today. You do not have to be consumed with this world today because God loves you. I don't know if you understand it today. Mm -hmm. All right. The Lord, he brings us this opportunity day after day. And I tell you again that we should be appreciative mm -hmm. of the Lord's mercy, of the multitude of his tender mercies. We should be appreciative today because God is full of mercy and we should be crying out today when we err, when we mess up, regardless of whatever it is that we are going through, we should be praying today, Lord have mercy yeah, yeah. on me. Yeah. You see, scripture proclaims happy is the man whom God corrects. Right. Therefore, do not despise the chastening of the almighty. Yeah. See, I don't know about any of you today. I am happy that the Lord is patient with me. All right. All right. I'm happy that the Lord loves me mm -hmm. and I am happy that the Lord is merciful because I could have been lost a long time ago right. well, well. if the Lord was not merciful mm -hmm. and if the Lord was not filled with grace. Mm -hmm. Not only could I have been lost, but I believe that all of us mm -hmm. would have been lost a long time ago. We would have been destroyed a long time ago if God did not love us. We are happy today because God did not give up on us where others would have gave up on us a long time ago. You see, you and I, we should be praising the Lord our God today because as Judge said, God is love and in his love there is mercy. Let us again remember what Paul said about God's love. It suffers long. Yeah, yeah. To suffer is to put up with. Mm -hmm. To suffer is to allow. Mm -hmm. To suffer is to endure pain or distress. Mm -hmm. I don't believe we realize today how much it pains the Lord when we mess up. Just think about it. You, you go out and you correct your child and then you sit there, you watch them continue to do the same thing over and over and over again after you have corrected them. Imagine how painful that is. If you don't have children, imagine how it is for another family member or for a friend. You done told them over and over again to stop doing that because that's wrong. That it, it just caused you to err. It caused you to fall down. Yet they choose to blatantly ignore. They choose to blatantly reject and refuse you. And they go out and they mess up. And they wonder why. They wonder why they are not blessed. Thankfully again, the Lord loves us. As Peter said, God is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. I praise and I give thanks to the Lord today for his tender mercies. And I would hope that all of you would join in with me during not only this season of the year, but for the rest of our lives. Because God is full of mercy, there is assurance. And in this assurance, there is peace and there is happiness. Again, I tell you that we should all come together during this season and for the rest of our lives in much appreciation for God's grace and for his mercy. 
Amen. Amen. Amen.